Crypto airdrops are crazy. There are countless examples of five-figure and sometimes even six-figure airdrops just for using a chain, dApp, or crypto game. The recent JTO airdrop made people over $10,000. The Ace airdrop actually made some of the early beta testers of the game over $100,000. But most people missed out on these airdrops, and the airdrop hype is now dying down. This means people have stopped farming airdrops, so there's less competition. So if you keep farming, you'll be the one with those big juicy airdrops. This is why today I'm going to go over some basic airdrop farming strategies and tips on how to find the best ones so you can get the next $10,000 or even a $100,000 airdrop. Oh, and make sure you stick around until the end because I'm going to share with you how you can get an airdrop simply for being part of my community. I recently shared a $300,000 airdrop with my community, so you might want to find out how you can take part. But before we get started, let me remind you that this is not financial advice and I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my strategy. This video is not intended for residents of the United Kingdom as UK regulations prohibit me from talking about crypto with you. If you're not in the UK, let's get started. But first, what is an airdrop? Crypto projects do airdrops to onboard users. The best way to incentivize people to use your chain, dApp, or play your game is to give them tokens. Doing an airdrop brings in early users and builds hype. It also allows the project to optimize its tech and make improvements. But for you, farming airdrops is just a great way to accumulate some capital, especially if you don't have much to start with. And as a side note, you learn a lot about crypto and DeFi by farming airdrops, which is a very valuable skill. But how do you even start? Before you get started with airdrops, I need to give you a bit of a warning. Airdrop farming is not without risk. You'll be connecting your wallet to a lot of different apps and clicking a lot of links. So don't use your main wallet for airdrop farming. It's a lot safer to create a separate MetaMask account. The age and transaction history of your wallet can matter for some airdrops. So instead of creating a new wallet for your airdrop farming, you could instead transfer your crypto to this new wallet and use your old wallet for the airdrops. All right, let's get into it. There are a few different ways to farm airdrops. Each type will depend on how much time you have and how much capital you have to use for airdrops. Let's start with the cheapest ones, testnet farming. It wasn't until recently that testnets were giving guaranteed rewards, but recently we've seen projects explicitly state that their testnet is incentivized. Three examples of this are DOP, Metis, and Savon. Now, don't go running to do their testnets. These testnets are already over. I just wanted to show you some examples. DOP and Metis are a great example of a testnet with clear instructions. DOP literally gave you a step-by-step -step of what to do on the testnet. Metis did the same, but they also gave you points. Savum, on the other hand, simply said that their testnet users will be rewarded, but it was up to you to figure out what to do. This is pretty standard when it comes to airdrops. In fact, most projects that have an airdrop coming will not reveal what you need to do or what their criteria are until after a snapshot has been taken. A snapshot is a moment in time where the project will collect all the data from wallets that have been used up until that date. Then they will filter these wallets according to criteria they set out and calculate the amount of tokens people get. Now, because testnets are free, they are arguably the airdrops that will require you to spend the most time on them. They're incredibly popular right now because everyone wants to farm airdrops without spending any money. It's often the top users that will get rewarded, so you will want to do loads of transactions on testnets. Depending on the type of project, these transactions will be making swaps, bridging, using the dApp, taking trades, adding liquidity to the pool, and faucet claims. These transactions are very similar to what you would be doing on mainnets, except this time they're free. One of the current testnet campaigns you could do is Mind Network. They have a Galaxy campaign that shows you what you can do on their app. If you follow along with the campaign and then repeat those transactions until the snapshot is announced, you could be eligible for the airdrop. I say could be because it's never a guarantee unless a project has explicitly stated that certain actions will get you an airdrop. This is something that you should always keep in mind when airdrop farming, guys. Don't expect that five minutes of farming is going to get you that $10,000 worth of tokens. Those types of airdrops are rare. Anyway, 
This brings me to the next type of airdrop farming, completing tasks and quests. Galaxy, Layer 3, Zeely and Interact are all websites which have gamified exploring dApps and chains. Projects like Manta have rewarded users with airdrops for completing tasks on these sites. An airdrop like this that you can farm right now is linear. Now, their airdrop is not officially confirmed, but let's be real, everything they're doing is pointing that way. They gave people NFTs for completing testnet tasks on Galaxy, they had a big linear voyage campaign with Interact, and now they have Linear Park on Layer 3. Since their Linear Voyage campaign, they have been rewarding participants with Linear XP or LXP. It's a token that has no value. But does that not sound like an airdrop to you? Linear Park is a great example of how projects will guide people through their ecosystem. There are tasks for people to do so they can explore games and dApps. For example, if you go to their unfettered quest here, they give you a bit of information about the game and then comes your quest. Once you've completed it, you get rewarded with LXP. Not every project has such an in-depth guide like Linear Park. In fact, the majority don't, but a lot of them do have ongoing tasks that will reward you with XP, points, or NFTs on the platforms. It's definitely worth doing them if you can. You don't wanna miss out on an airdrop simply because you didn't bother doing these tasks. The most common way to farm an airdrop is by simply being a user. Chains like to see volume and transactions, so that's what airdrop farmers do. They'll use the native bridge a few times, do some swaps on the network, maybe provide liquidity somewhere, and that's it. Then they repeat this monthly, weekly, or sometimes even daily, depending on how focused they are on a certain chain or dApp. An example for this type of airdrop is DeFi Spot. DeFi Spot is a cross-chain swap and they have already confirmed an airdrop for their users. For every swap you make, you'll earn points and those points will get converted to an airdrop. The best part, if you use my link, you'll get a discount on your fees. This, however, is also the most expensive way to farm an airdrop. You'll have to pay for gas fees, bridge fees, or any other fees you may come across. But the kicker is, doing this type of farming in conjunction with the other two is the best way to farm airdrops. A lot of projects will have test nets with Galaxy campaigns as well as a mainnet launch. If projects don't release a token when the mainnet is released, it's likely that the token will come later and your continued use of the chain or dApp could give you a bigger airdrop. Now you know a bit more about how to farm airdrops, the big question is, how do you find airdrops? Your first method is Twitter. Get on there and interact with airdrop accounts. The algorithm will catch on and soon you'll see a lot of airdrop content. There are a lot of accounts that give people step-by-step -step instructions or guides for specific projects. One of the biggest tips I can give you to find the best airdrops is to get a feel for how many people are farming an airdrop. The more people farming, the less each person gets, especially if you're starting late. Your second method is to check how much money a project has raised. If a chain has raised a ton of money, but they don't have a token yet, then chances are a token is coming. This doesn't automatically mean they're gonna do an airdrop, but if they've got questing campaigns or some point system, it's a bit of a giveaway that they are. Now, some projects may also hide airdrop announcements in their tokenomics or white paper. The holy grail of airdrop farming is finding a project with a big raise, no token, mentions of potential airdrops or rewards in their tokenomics, and not many people are talking about it yet. And the final method is to check dApps on a chain you're farming that doesn't have a token yet. A good rule of thumb is to find a dex for swapping on the chain that doesn't have a token. By using that dex, you're potentially farming two airdrops at once. The airdrop for the chain and the airdrop for the dex. Of course, that isn't a guarantee. Make sure to check if there are any signs that point towards that dex doing an airdrop. If this all feels a bit overwhelming, don't worry, it's completely normal. In fact, I've set up an entire section in my Discord to make all of this way easier for you. We have a nice community of airdrop farmers and a list of airdrops you can farm. And since we have such a nice community, people will always be sharing new quests, important tweets, as well as official airdrop claim links. A community like this is really great if you want to find new stuff to do. Speaking of Discord, at the start of this video, I promised you I would tell you how you can receive airdrops simply for being part of the LOC community. So how do you do this? Join my Discord and get chatting. 
A while ago, I had this crazy idea of sharing pre-sale allocation with my community. Well, this idea has grown and a lot of projects have given the LOC community some huge airdrops. VIA and Your AI are recent examples. Both airdrops performed incredibly well and resulted in over $300,000 being airdropped to my community. And all the winners had to do was submit their wallet to my airdrop bot and be a little bit active in my Discord. So get in there and join in the conversation. But that's it guys. I hope this video helped make airdrops a little bit easier to understand. Come join my Discord for a chance to win some airdrops. There will be another one very soon. If you're interested in more airdrops, check out my airdrop guide next and boost your capital for this bull run. But until next time, guys, farm smart, don't be a dumbass, and I'll see you soon.